I hope your day is full of snow cones and sundaes and ice cream sandwiches and soft serve swirled in a cone and banana splits and key lime pie and banana pudding. Gotta have banana pudding. Guys, what's up? It's a dessert intro. Happy Wednesday. We have an amazing pod for you this week with the one, the only Josh Potter. But before we get into this week's episode, I just want to remind you guys that I will be at Supernova tonight, June 8th. That's Wednesday, June 8th with Kimberly Congdon, 8 p.m. Come out, support live comedy, Also, I'm going to be in San Diego with Josh Potter in the second weekend of July. I'm also going to be in Bellflower with Josh Potter and Kim Congdon later in July. You can find out uh, more dates at Princess Shank on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, guys, we have an amazing episode of Shank for you this week with the one, the only Josh Potter. But before we get into this week's episode, I just want to tell you about something that excites me, and that's Oh Yeah Socks. Oh, yeah. Look down at your feet right now. Are you wearing socks? If you're not wearing socks, ask yourself why. Why not buy a pair of Oh Yeah socks? That's three O's, H-Y-E-A-H dot com. You can head over to their website. You get 10% off and you can shop discount code Sarah10. These are one of my favorite pairs that they have right now. They're Joshua Tree socks. I mean... They have socks for whatever you're into, whether it's Bob Ross or Mr. Rogers or the Brady Bunch. There's a pair of socks for you. Head over to ohyeah.com. That's three O's. H-Y-E-A-H dot com. Enter discount code Sarah10. S-A-R-A-10. And guys, I hope you enjoy this week's episode of Shank with the one, the only, Josh Potter. Also, Subscribe to my other podcast, This Bitch. Okay, let's get into this week's episode of Shank with Josh. Here, record on here. We don't earn this uh, one, one, right? Oh, do you want another one? No, 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 no. I right, have... They're right there. I mean, so. Oh, yeah, I have all the wine you could ever want and need. I have to do stuff later. You do? After Toasty! What? <laughs> That's off topics. <laughs> Edit that out, Xavier. I, he will, he will. <laughs> That's gone. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. These are nice. Th- these are packwoods. Packwoods are really good. We love a packwood. Um, very excited to have you on the podcast. Have missed you on the podcast. Has not been the same without Potter coming <laughs> when back. Was, when was the last time? Weeks. It's been maybe even months, Potter. I've, I feel like I, we should have smoked before recording because I'm going to cough with this, with my little premature baby lungs. Your preemie lungs? Yeah, I cough all the time. People are like, don't you smoke every day? And I'm like, yeah, but I still have lungs. baby ass lungs. Dude, why do people hate on people for coughing? I don't know. Probably because of the pandemic. Well, they used to do it beforehand. They're like, what a bitch, coughing. What are you, fucking pussy? You know what they do to me? They go, you're not even really inhaling. Yeah, I'm fake smoking weed. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I I can't handle it. I'm fake smoking (laughs) weed. You're like, do you hear me talking right now? I'm like, I'm high. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, that is fucking crazy. People people love to hate online. (laughs) Yeah, sure do. <laughs> you know what I mean? I um I actually inhale too hard. You inhale too hard? Meaning like I'll cuz I love weed. So when I smoke anything, I'll go like and I get it down deep as far as it can go. Even like cigarettes, I'm like if people watch me smoke a cigarette and they're like, "You smoke that like it's a joint." You you really inhale. Yeah, I'm like, that's why I can't smoke cigars. I am an awful cigar smoker because I for, I have this like impulse to inhale. Dude, cigar culture is weird. Yeah, me and my my buddy uh, Matt Bergman, who is a comic who I do my Patreon with, we were just talking about that on the Patreon. He thinks he's like these fucking cigar guys. He goes off on them. He does. Yeah, he's like they look like they're sucking a big brown dick and they're all <laughs> fucking sitting around talking about their dumb hats. 
Well, that's amazing. I mean, yeah, cigar culture is so, it's so masculine. Like, a woman smoking a cigar. <coughs> it always seemed like old man shit to me. Like, I'd rather, I see a cigar, I go, let's gut that thing open and put some weed in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, a cigar makes me think, like, oh, is Bob Hope about to pop up? Yeah, it's it gives me, like, fire hall vibes. And, like, which isn't bad. I can do that. Like, <coughs> you know, Tom and Bert love their cigars, and if they want to go get one, I'll go get one with them. You know, I have no qualms with that. You'll be a cigar I'll boy. I'll be a cigar boy, but I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll go, whatever they're having, you know? I'll do one of those. So the, are they deep into cigar culture? Well... <coughs> I know they like them. <laughs> like I think it must be like it's like one of those I'm things so when you sorry, have. I'm so sorry, everybody. No, it's okay. It's good. People like seeing a genuine side. The authentic I, uh, Josh coughs. You I, know. Yeah, Tom is like uh, not a guy who likes. You know, he like to have a nice drink and a cigar after a show. Like that's a that's like a a night after a show. You know, he's not one to like. I mean, he can't really go to bars anymore. But even when he could, like. Without getting mobbed, he wouldn't do that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, uh, maybe on occasion, but... And I think Bert just likes all the stuff. Bert likes all the things? Yeah. I could see that. Like I said, I'm a, I'll am be down to someone who's like, you want a cigar? I'd go, sure. But I'd rather have one of these. Uh, you know? Yeah, fuck yeah. I would rather have one of those, too. Because the cigar... The smell of a cigar is gross to me, too. I know. Doesn't we... I love the smell of weed. Like, if someone was like, the house smells like weed, I'd be like, oh, isn't it great? Yeah, I could really bro out about the scent of weed. Like, I, I have to it. really act cool because it's like, because I'm like a 35 year old lady. I don't want to bro out too hard, but What's I fucking out to love weed? weed. You know, like, I celebrate 420 and I'm 35. Yeah. It's not ideal, Josh. <laughs> I get it's it. Really I mean, not ideal. And when you say you celebrate it, though, I mean, I just, <laughs> I it's work. just the same day. Yeah. It's the, yeah, same. we had a show. We did a fun show. Oh, we yeah, made we money. On, we made, yeah. we worked on 420. Yeah, exactly. Honey. Yeah. So, I mean, and sure, weed is a part of our jobs. I mean, it is for me. I have to smoke before I go on stage. Otherwise, I just. Before? Yeah. Just a little bit. I don't have, I'm not, I'm not saying not I get good like right baked. before. No, I have to have a little something to bring me like. Baseline? Like. Yes. Chill you out just a little bit. A hundred percent. For me, I'm like, I it throws off my timing. Mm. When I'm, but on a podcast, I'll get high as hell and start talking about like Dungeons and Dragons, no yeah. problem. Like I'm into, yeah, sure. I'm, into, <laughs> I'm into that. Me too. You're into Dungeons and Dragons or you're know. into just talking about just random Just like shit? mystical, so whimsical things. Well, you and Kim come up here to these woods and you put on elf ears and I, who knows what happens. We become different people. <laughs> yeah, you're pixies all of a we sudden. We take doing... mushrooms and we put on elf ears. We become different you're hosts. spell circles and <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah, witchcraft you're under the moon. you dolls and cri- <laughs> crap like that. They're just putting curses on people. <laughs> <laughs> Guys don't get together and put curses on people. No, well, kind of. I mean, in sports ritual... Yeah. It's not necessarily so mystic and whatever, but it is like we'd love to put a curse on a guy. We say we motherfuck athletes we hate, you know, in a guy circle, I guess. We motherfuck athletes we hate in a guy circle. Like, that fucking guy. So good. Ugh. God, why has he got to be so good? It's fucking annoying. You ever get mad about like Tom Brady being awesome in football? Did Tom Brady retire and then come back and be like, actually, I'm just kidding? I was woke to his retirement. When he retired, everyone's like, you must be so happy. He's gone. I go, he's not gone. I knew what was happening. And he came back. And that's fine. Uh, he's down in the NFC South. You don't know what that means, but he's down in the NFC South where he doesn't bother me anymore. When he was in my division for 20 years of my life. My division. Yeah, By the, the way, AFC you call it East. Your it is my division. It's, where I, it's like saying my city where I live. You know what I mean? I live in the, I'm from the AFC East. And he was there, and he ruled supreme. Like, it's very Game of Thrones. He, like, for 20 years, you know, crushed our spirits. Are you a Star Wars person? He was, like, the Empire. It was, like, he was Darth Vader, and we never got to shoot two torpedoes into his Death Star and fucking blow it up. So, but, hey, we beat the Patriots 50 to nothing last year. I cried. I wish I was you, there. <laughs> you're just, you just went so hard in the paint. I'm so I'm high. I'm sorry. We, you became, you were talking about the team. You were a part of something. I, I was just sitting here like, <laughs> fuck, I need to get into sports. I don't have anything like that. The Bills are my Star Wars. They're my uh, Lord of the Rings. You know what I mean? And they happen in real time. And I'm obsessed with them. And they are my life. And so 
yeah, I I don't know. I have no wife and child, <laughs> so I have the, my football team. I get it. I wish I had my football team. Yeah, I think everyone I mean? should have something like that. And people make fun of me. I just got made fun of on because uh, I had a podcast come out with uh, Ian Fidance today. Okay. And I was talking to him about how I don't have a favorite baseball team because I can't fake it. Because I like came into baseball late and I never grew up with a pro team. So I can't pretend to like a baseball team nearly as much as I love the Buffalo Bills. Do you know what I mean? Like no, it's I, ingrained in my soul. I know. Whereas like love, I can't just pretend to like something. I know you love the Buffalo Bills because you showed up when they were playing in full gear. You were well, I wasn't so in much, full gear. It was, that makes it sound like I came with <laughs> shoulder pads. pads and a helmet. <laughs> no, I was dressed. I was, I mean, it was the. Divisional round of the playoffs. I I have a wonderful, uh, what is that material? I don't know. It has uh, satin jacket. The satin has a special touch. Yeah, it's an old. I knew school. it was a special moment when you showed up in the satin. Jacket. Yeah, I was after we were doing a podcast. I had to go watch the AFC divisional round. Naturally, at the bar. At the bar, or maybe it was not even that. Maybe it might have even been just like week eighteen. I don't remember actually. I feel like it was like a big moment though, because you were gonna go. It was watch. to clinch the AFC East, so kind of a big moment. Yes. So I went to go watch it at a Bills party in uh, Hermosa Beach. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm talking so much about the Bills. I no, no. I've got lost. I'm, <laughs> you know, I, I like got all whimsical. About, I'm I stared into the mountains. The and <laughs> I'm asking you about the Bills because I know it's something you're very passionate about. I don't know shit about the Bills. No, I mean that's fine. I will. I. Will, if you ever want, teach you everything. <laughs> I need to take I mean, a crash course in the build. It's my, uh, I don't know. It's like. Um, are you into like periods of history like that too? I've dated guys who are like, get really into like World War II. I'm like, why? <laughs> are they old? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that I that's think a, about it. A, and I mean, I know some guys that, that are like history buffs and shit like that and. I kind of, I mean, I love the stories. I like when a history buff gets into a story and tells me something cool, but I'm not doing fucking the research. The research. I'm like too busy trying to like keep up with what's going on in 2022. You know what I mean? I don't need to know. My grandpa was born in 1922. And from what he told me, shit was he bad. said shit sucks. So, I mean, why would I want, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't need to learn more about why shit sucks. You don't want to learn about King Louis the 14th. It's like, what do you do with that information? <laughs> they make you memorize shit that you never need again. I mean, I'm, I got OJ. I don't need to learn about like Henry VIII cutting off women's heads. I got OJ. <laughs> He's a Buffalo Bill. You know what I mean? Dude, cutting <laughs> off people's heads is so intense. Like beheading somebody, that seems worse than the death penalty. If you just got beheaded, if we brought back beheading, well, yeah, no, it's a hundred percent. That's why we have, for, you know, every criticism of the death penalty, they do. Try to make it as humane as possible by, like, making sure they don't feel pain or whatever. That's why I don't understand. I mean, like, what's really... Well, then what's the benefit? Is the goal to not make them feel pain? So, like, supposedly the electric chair just, like, zaps you in your brain. You're out. You're done. Lethal injection, you just kind of, like... It's like getting um, anesthesia. You know what I mean? You just go under. Like, they just go, like, here's an injection and you die. Well, like getting beheaded or like stoned. Well, those things are considered like for whatever reason. I think the death penalty probably. I mean, I don't. I'm not like anti death penalty. Listen to me getting all really, like. I'm not really pro death penalty. Every, I'm not like anti, but I'm not pro it. I don't know. It, I think certain. I feel like things you go like that guy should get the death penalty. Like the guy who shot up the grocery store in Buffalo. I'm like sure. Death penalty, fine. I mean, that guy is I irredeemable. Like, I me. wish you could spend every day of your life in pain. Just having to be alive. Yeah, it almost seems like the death penalty, though, isn't out. Yeah, <laughs> it's you're like, right. It's like a vacation. But they, some people are. I don't know. You just go. I guess he dies. I don't know. It's it's. Re you're right. It really is strange. It is like mentally very weird. Too, yeah, it to is. Be like, <laughs> it's a to pretzel. Be like, I'm gonna be yeah. killed. I feel like that part of it, the mental part of it yeah just knowing it's coming on this day i'm going to be dead they still do hangings i think too some places which it doesn't seem that seems very archaic to me but like my point though is that s people would just they go we do it in a humane way now it's like putting down a dog as opposed to like slicing their heads off or like doing a 
twenty one gun salute where you're just blindfolded in front of a range of people or whatever. You know, they've come up with ways now where they're like, No, this is actually they serve the ultimate penalty, but they don't suffer. Which is we're not animals. You know, yeah, because that's, that's we're right. not yeah. animals. Yeah, exactly. Fire up the chair. Yeah. We're not yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire it up, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm like, uh, the only reason I think I know anything about the electric chair, I'm sure someone out there can correct me, is from The Green Mile, that movie where like, because like in that movie they show, and this is a very like old timey electric chair, but he dips the sponge in water, and you're supposed Michael to put this. Michael Clark Duncan was in that. Yeah, this that is just Mike... came out of nowhere. Like I was. This like, is when I think name? they were electrocuting. Oh no, maybe it was somebody else they were electrocuting. But this man is like hates this inmate, so he doesn't wet the sponge. He puts a dry sponge in there, so the electricity goes like through the body and like essentially cooks the guy. So he's alive for like it takes forever to, for him to die and he's like feeling because like, you need the sponge because the sponge being wet was like a con like a, a con- conductor to like just zap it straight through into your brain okay you know so like he goes he he fake wet the sponge in the green mile that's like part of the green mile and that's the only reason i have any knowledge of i don't know nowadays though we walk through a fucking thing at the it says Leodos on the top of it, and you walk through it in an airport, and it's like, zong, zong. I'm sure they've gotten more efficient electric chairs in 2022, you know, compared to the 40s or whenever the Green Mile's Dude, taking place. Oh, an electric chair from the 40s sounds like it would be haunted as fuck. That's always the ones in your standard haunted house where the guy's like, yeah, yeah. You walk by, and it's like, an electric chair and a psych ward, all very like horrific energy to me. That was always my, out of all the haunted house themes and decorum, the. Asylum was always my the like, asylum because that's rough. always when we're like, I might end up in there. You know? yeah, it's <laughs> like this is a little too realistic. Like, when am I going to be in some castle where there's like a vampire <laughs> or like a werewolf or something? I'm never going to be in that. But an asylum, that one stuck with me as a child. Yeah, <laughs> same with me because uh, also like a haunted bitch in a nighty. I love a nightgown. Those, oh Anytime my god, where they I got put the on long a nightgown. Hair and they're just like, <laughs> that's how I feel. You could do that. <laughs> do you do that in the night to your boyfriend? I do you that just... in the night. I throw on a, the, a I'm nightgown. I'm gonna really fuck with him right now. Ready? He's gonna go to the bathroom and I'm just gonna be standing over him in a you vintage could... nightgown with oh hair God, all over dude. my face. You could sincerely out. frighten him. <laughs> like... You could also do that like Emily Rose nonsense, where like the man wakes up and you're just like on the ground like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're just eyes wide open. <laughs> Oh my no. god! Why don't you have more one night stands just to fuck with guys like that? Where you just freak? That's how you get your power back, though. You know how like guys are, <laughs> guys are rapists and predators and all that. You just got to start freaking them out, thinking you're just like a, a haunted lady. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, hey, come over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you up? It's That's how you get back at count. the predators. You're just like, <laughs> can you contort yourself in weird ways on the ground? Where you're just like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude. And I just start... don't talk and stare in the night. Yeah, and really blink, late. Really wide-eyed. Don't even blink. Just try not to blink, and then it's like tears come out of your eyes. It would and be it, blood an energy. comes out of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just become like a haunted. Tip bitch. to all ladies: get your power back. Become oh. a haunted ass bitch. <laughs> Just get a weird, creepy nightgown. Buy it for, like a vintage nightgown with a bow, maybe a little frill, a lace or something. Take a shower. Don't dry off. Put it on. <laughs> Hopefully it's lightning outside. <laughs> Don't brush your hair. Yeah, no, just let it. Whatever comes out of the shower, just over your eyes, preferably. Over your eyes. Stand over in a hallway. Oh, yeah. If you have a hallway, even better. Long hallway. Maybe a bay window you can stand in front of. That would help. It's sort of like this energy. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, it's windy outside, so like the trees are hitting the door, and like (laughs) (laughs) the moon is full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole vibe. Yeah, you want real like go look up Celine Dion's music video for uh, no. (laughs) uh, What was that one? I was singing in the car. Um, there were nights when the wind, wind. was so cool. Yeah, that song, yeah, yeah. whatever when that we song is, to, that music video, do that and be haunted. When we went to the rec room. I forgot you were there and I brought that reference up not remembering this happened. When we went to the rec room. <laughs> oh no. It it's okay, spoil. you want another You want another wine? Mm. He's a wine dad. 
It didn't spill at all, did it? Or did no. it spill? Okay. I don't know. It doesn't matter. This tablecloth is from the 1990s. No, it didn't spill one drop. Golly. All How right. does he do it? Do you want another How does one? he do it? <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> 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 yes, I'll take I mean, it's all the way over there. Do you want me to get it? No, it's fine. It's just at the end of the table. <laughs> I do it all. You are I the producer. I'm the, the producer. I'm the, the PA. PA. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <gasps> I'm the director. <clears throat> but yeah, then we were driving to the rec room. You were talking about that. When we were driving to the rec room, we were talking about Celine Dion <laughs> and don't... how I said I didn't, I didn't vibe with Celine. Oh Dion. my god, that's right. Then you threw shade. I threw shade, and then turns out. She does have some bangers. Yeah, I was like, where have you been? You just had, what, had this like Titanic stigma. What was it? No, I just feel like there's something about Celine Dion's energy that looks kind of bitchy to me. I well, no, know. she's she powerful. Like... She wasn't your standard <laughs> diva. She wasn't your, you know, Madonna who's grinding on the ground. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know <laughs> no, what I mean? Madonna like, could scale it back a little. She could class it up, you know? Put your pussy away, Madonna. But I'm saying, like, that was, at the time, you know, the, hey, everyone's going that way, you know? And then Celine Dion existed during, like, Britney Spears, and, like, she was, like, Adele for the 90s. She was, but I feel like Adele has, like, a sweeter charm to her than Celine. There's something about Celine's face It's because Adele's fat that you think that you have... have, (laughs) Right now you're talking about thin prejudice. You're... Yeah, it's because her cheekbones are so sharp, and she's very like Celine. she bangs her chest. Celine Dion. Yeah, and her song. She's a little too sharp, facially. Yeah, and I love a sharp lady. <laughs> you do? I do. I'm a I'm a Shoot angles your guy. Shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. I'm an shot. angles guy <laughs> with, with Celine no, Dion. No, she's she's old now. It's, I'm old too, but she uh, <laughs> she had a lover at the time. She had a, a husband who was much older than much her. Much older. He died, and now she's like living in Canada. On top of all of her money. You know where Celine Dion currently is. Well, she's is. from Canada, so I believe she went back to... I would see. I'm thinking a residency at... If she in was Vegas, a Vegas, if she was a Vegas, oh my god, I would you go to open that. For Celine I would take my mother night. to that. I, oh my god, I don't want to open for her. Are you, you kidding don't? me? <laughs> the, are you serious? The women who go to see Celine Dion and then they see my act. I that love would that. be. <laughs> that would be walkout bill. There was a night. There was a Josh and Celine live. There's no. I would never do that to her, <laughs> Celine Dion. Is my point. I would never sour yeah. that with those women's nights. I mean, I know I I know I'm good at comedy, but I am not their cup of tea. Well, you can't just go on stage and shotgun a beer. I guess I could like right before no, Celine I know, gets I guess, on. Right? I mean, Start I never. Wine. I never do it when I open. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, no, I mean my fucking nine eleven jokes and my fucking are you kid- kidding me? You're no, I I, I could you. charm them. I used to do gigs where you you'd show I up and the audience would them. be and I have we put you in a suit. I'd have to dig some jokes out of the attic and dust them off and we put you in a bow tie. That would Make, never work. No, <laughs> I no, you, I look like I'll belong on jet. They'll be like, how did the ventriloquist dummy get off the lap? <laughs> this is a real <laughs> elaborate one, you know. Oh my god! But yeah, no, I uh, I did a show one time. F- f- Michael Ian Black got sick, and mm-hmm. the club I like was around, and a club called me to fill in a headline. And I acted like people were coming to see me. <laughs> okay, and I they like were it. not coming to see me. And I'm like, this one woman, I I did it. I do. I I'm not gonna say what I did the joke about, but it's about something that like I guess boomers would be sensitive over a death of a celebrity. Mm-hmm. And uh, this woman hissed me like hissed a, at you? S- like boo like hissed and booed she went hiss like and then snake? and i made it a promo yeah like, like you know that's cat? like an old timey like <laughs> that i don't it's the opposite <laughs> of a laugh you know yeah i don't like a hiss mm. so from a woman I and i made a promo lady. out of this but a waitress at the club filmed her complaining to the manager uh saying that she um, as a medical professional, was obligated to report me as being mentally unstable for the things that I was saying. No. <laughs> what were you saying? I was doing my act. I was doing okay, yeah. my so act. You and Celine 
not happening but no. but i will say we listened to celine dion the whole way to the rec room <laughs> and she had some fucking bangers and a- no, yeah. after that experience i came back a new woman i said you know what maybe celine does have some hits maybe did celine- i change your life did <laughs> i affect things in your decisions that you've made yeah because she's so angular i hate to judge a book by her cover but yeah she's so angular and sharp that there, she's doesn't seem like she's nice in the worlds of Lizzo's and Adele's. <laughs> yes. We don't an have an angular. <laughs> an angular I queen. Said, <laughs> I said this. Yeah. Yeah. She's Celine Dion's a pointy, angular. My pointy queen. <laughs> Celine Dion, my pointy queen. I was saying this too. Like on my, I said this on my podcast, but I want to bring it up again because it's a thought that I was reminded of yesterday taping mm-hmm. it. Ashley Simpson was way hotter pre-nose job. Oh. I haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. You got to pull up the comparison. She was so much hotter pre nose job. She had like character. Then she got a nose job, and you're like, that's just some face. I don't know. That's just. I never wanted to make out with anyone more than Ashley Simpson, and then she got the nose job, and I was like, out completely. I can't tell. Ashley Simpson. Ashley Simpson. When she first came on the scene. So hot. I was so obsessed hot. with her. So cool. Oh, my God. Her. Didn't you have a reality show? I think, like, no, that was Jessica and Nick, but I think she was, like, a part of it at one point. She was a part she of it. She was married to Pete Wentz, who was, like, when I was, oh yeah, you know, in college, I'm like, Pete Wentz is the coolest guy in the history of time, you Pete know? <laughs> Wentz. Pete Wentz and Ashley Simpson. You're like, I dated Pete Wentz. I wouldn't even be surprised by that. Like, if I dated Pete Wentz? Yeah. He could if pop anybody, up on any date. LA is so weird like that. Yeah, it's like, actually, I know someone who dated Pete yeah, Wentz or whatever. Like, you're like, you're I'd like, be oh. like, oh, Jesus, I'm from <laughs> Buffalo. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it all seems like on Mars to me at this point. You know? Dude. Yeah, but the Pete Wentz does seem like someone that someone would go on a date with and it would come up. Like, that could happen. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, my girlfriend, my, my or my girlfriend, I, I say that like I'm my mother, you know, like. Girls don't do that. They don't call their friends girlfriends. But my mom used to do that about girl on girl, like just friendships. She oh, goes, my yeah. girlfriend, Stacy or whatever. I'd be like, it's just your friend. <laughs> you don't have to just call her your girlfriend. Like it's like a thing in the s- yeah, 60s yeah, or yeah, something yeah, that yeah. like they'd be like. So I don't know. I don't even know why. But yeah, no. Uh, you would hear stories about like oh my girl fr- my friend uh you know i can't think of a modern name i'm like barb like that would be a hollywood name i'm like <laughs> been watching Ashley. a lot of roseanne i don't know <laughs> yeah no caitlin somebody probably dated pete wentz in the proximity of friendships that i have at this point yeah we're just all one step one person removed from pete wentz at this point. <laughs> no he's probably a good boy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Pete Wentz getting the most shout outs. Ashley Simpson should get more. Ashley I don't know Simpson. where she is today or what she's doing, but hey, if you're out there, Ashley. Dude, being a Simpson seems like it'd be weird. The dad was a little off to me. Yeah, he had he that like, a... like, he aspired to be what Britney Spears' dad was. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But he's yeah. just like, I can't bridle these cattle. I can't, <laughs> yeah, I can't keep them in yet. <laughs> can't keep these girls in line. It's <laughs> like uh, Jessica was like a vir- notoriously a virgin until she married Nick Lachey. And they like exploited that and made a show out of it. And yeah. then Nick Lachey had sex with her and he was like, this shit is unreal. I can't remember if it was him or somebody else <laughs> that said that her pussy was like napalm. It was like the hottest no, shit ever. Yes. No. And so that made me go like, I get why Nick Lachey waited it out all those years because he was like, this shit's going to be nuts <coughs> you know well, what if you waited out that whole time and then just <laughs> no but like he knew you can tell when it's gonna just be like uh, you'd be okay. like why am i waiting this out this girl like <laughs> we're doing all we're doing hands and other stuff and this girl's like i'm i'm bored but nick lachey was so like i cannot wait to get in there because of the other just the way she was that he was like oh my lord Nick this Lachey is going... held out for Jessica Simpson. They got married. It didn't work. No, but then he was like, okay, I had this fire-ass pussy. The rest of her is kind of getting on my nerves. <laughs> I'm going to bail. And then, like, you know, Johnny Knoxville fucked her and a, 
some other some other famous person and they all were like yeah dude the best ever and so really? just, yeah 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 Jessica Simpson is the best pussy I mean just like I don't know if it's just her pussy I'm saying just like the best lay of their lives like she was like people were like publicly expounding on these like poetic stories of how yeah. fire her pussy was no, <laughs> yeah. No. yeah google it folks Jessica Simpson. Fi- yeah, Jessica Simpson napalm puss. pussy. And again, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it was Nick Lachey, but it was definitely not. If it wasn't Nick Lachey, it was a f- another famous person John that was Mayer? like. John Mayer fucked her too. And you know, he loves pussy. So yeah, he, and he like went pussy. back. He like dated her. He like was like, I might marry. I was doing pop that was. Commentary. <laughs> <laughs> so I went good. from the Bills to <laughs> Jessica Pete Simpson <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Ashley. Jessica Simpson, dude. So do you think what other what other famous women do you think have good pussy? And which ones do you think have questionable pussy? What's what's <laughs> questionable mean? Just like boring lays? Yeah. That's interesting. Give me some uh, I give me a person. Like uh, Angelina Jolie. I'm sure she was just one of those ones where you write stories about. I mean like crazy. Because, yeah, you'd be like, I can't have dinner with this girl, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can't have dinner with You know what I mean? Like, we, we're at dinner. We're, like, staring off into the... There's nothing so to So, uh, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. You just... <laughs> so, any more how's the, uh, how's, <laughs> how's your apps over there? Like, you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know, you have, like, did you want another drink? Like, that's the conversation at dinner. But, like, you managed to get to the, the other parts, and good golly, that's one where it's, like... That that seemed like it would fuck you up emotionally. I wish I could go back in time in a time machine, and that's what I would want to research. Everyone's like, I want to go see Gettysburg. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, you want to see the bloodiest battle on American soil? I want to test out all the p- historical pussy and see, like, and just be able to tell everyone, be like, Cleopatra was... <laughs> She could suck a dick, Cleopatra. I can see that. <laughs> Joan of Arc. I'd have to get them to fuck me, though. That's the problem. Like that would be a fun time travel television experiment. show. You do, you <laughs> yeah, go not experiment, but I would do a television show about. It. I have to go back in time and seduce all the like, just to see all how the bad good their pussies history. are. Yeah, be like, Joan of Arc was a lesbo. Don't even like. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not, not even, even allowed. I'm not her. even wasting the uranium on the <laughs> on the time machine <laughs> to go fuck with that. I'm not you turning what? a lesbian. All right. Not in those. If you're a lesbian back then, you are a lesbian. You are not. You are not mincing Joan words. Joan of Arc. You're not bi. Joan of Arc was gay. Gay. Hundo percent. She was gay. Like her. Like there's a couple of them where you go like nah. Elizabeth Taylor. Oh yeah, I Would mean, you go back? <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor was like, I'd have to go Your back to was extreme. yeah, because yeah, yeah. I thought of it. I'm like, she's oh, probably God. like, I could probably not even go back that far and have fun sex with Elizabeth Taylor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, she was still like in her sixties, like fucking like crazy. You know what you I mean? Think? Where you'd be like, yeah, because of all that experience by that point, like, you, don't you think would that, even like, at some point she was tired of it. Like, well, I'm I would all hope dicks I, Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> that's my point. She goes, I can make all of them work. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's like, I've seen every button. I've pushed them all. I know what gets this guy going. I can tell in two touches. I've you seen know? every button. I yeah, know, <laughs> I know what they all do. <laughs> so I would sacrifice some of her, by the way, beautiful, gorgeous looks for some of that experience. You know, I'd have to. For I'd find a happy. Elizabeth that would Taylor, be a. That like would be a, a fun. Five-year-old. That would be a fun Taylor. experiment on its own. I would like first. I would get the funding to do this, and I'd get a couple marquee ladies. Then I would go. Well, now I'm going to spend the entire year fucking Elizabeth Taylor from 1955 to 1985. <laughs> <laughs> And then I have research. I have people in labs like testing things, and I go the prime year. What. Between experience and looks, no, no. the optimum year was sixty-two. Right? Like, you know what I no. mean? You have something like that? No. 
Yeah, that'd be great. You find out the exact year where Elizabeth Taylor's pussy was the best. Yes. You go back in time and fuck her. <laughs> no, that's what I would. I would fuck her in all the years. In all of the years. To test and find, and then I would tell the world. Experience. I would I like go. It. The cr- the best cross section of experience and looks. The optimum year was here you know i'd find it through the research you know and i'd have to bring some other guys with me to help I me out you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you need a team <laughs> i gotta have a, i gotta have a little some you know you can't have yes men around you all the time and <laughs> <gasps> oh my god elizabeth taylor what about um lucille ball <sighs> That could really go either way. I yeah, know. you know, I'd like to try it. I will say, <laughs> I would go back and try it just so I could come back. And if it was, if it was, I have my suspicions going in. You know, I have my hypotheses, as you do in any sort of scientific experiment. Your response was ext- when I said it, it was like, <laughs> well, because you know, it's it a that's a risky one. Like Elizabeth Taylor's a slam dunk to the point where I want to do year by year analysis. <laughs> Lucille Ball's like one where you go back and you go, let's just see here what's going on. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it could be anything. Yeah, this could be a roll of the dice. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you go back and you go because we have to find out some of the poorer pussy of the past. You know. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be right if they're all just prime pussy. No, I can't. Past. I can't you just have... go back on a glory tour. This is research. <laughs> this is research. Yeah, for science. Judy Garland. <laughs> oh my God, she was probably so much fun. Like I've had sex with women that are not attractive because they are just the, a blast and then they are fun to have sex with mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i'm also i have low self-esteem <laughs> but, but also you're thinking like judy but so garland. judy garland like but judy garland like she got kind of let's just say she was beautiful in wizard of oz but, but she got like she, she got real boozy and pilly <laughs> like and she was up there on like johnny carson being like hey there johnny and i was like you know what i mean <laughs> She became kind of a real sailor at the end of it all. Yeah, and, Judy uh, Garland at the She was end. like 32 then. She looked like she was 60-something. You know what I mean? It was <laughs> yeah. one of those. She's like the Phil... You don't get this reference, but she's like Phil Blanda compared to Tom Brady. Like, Tom Brady's 43, and he looks like younger than I look right now, and I'm 36. And Phil Blanda was a 43-year-old quarterback back in the NFL in, like, the 70s. And you look at him and you're like, is that a grandpa playing quarterback? <laughs> it's fucking wild. Isn't it weird, though? Like, when you see pictures of older people from a long time ago, they look way older yeah, w- than old people now. Wealth and uh, also just, like, for all the shit that people complain about the food, medical science has la- made us last a quite a, few, a bit longer in diet, stuff like that, knowledge of diet and things. You see, like, yeah. a person in... The- Jerry Seinfeld's, like, back in the fucking 90s, I would have been, like, Jerry Seinfeld is 63 is elderly like i thought that was like a grandpa now jerry seinfeld looks like he could like do an iron outrun man. me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah you know he can i mean there's no doubt in my mind do you know what i mean like i'm 36 for christ's sake this is what 36 looked like in 1965 okay no, <laughs> no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but even still like if i was doing what i do now in 1965 They'd be like, Josh died at 34. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, it's true. I'm just saying. We have much better uh, conveniences of life now. Are you good doing Skank Fest in Vegas? Yeah. That's going to be fun. I'm so psyched. I'm scared. I'm not scared. I had I'm so ready. much fun last year. Do you know in two weeks I'm going at, to Vegas again after that to go to the When I Was Young Festival or something like that? Oh, is that after Skank Fest? Yeah, it's two weeks after. So you- and then along the way, hopefully you run into Celine. I'd love her if she did. I mean, I'd love all of them if they did a residency. That's how old I am now where I go, God, I hope Christina Aguilera does a residency. <laughs> in Ve- you know what I mean? Like, I'd go see it. And I'd be like, Christina and then some, Aguilera. some 21 year old would be like, ah, uh, like these fucking, they'd call me a boomer or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, imagine our parents are like, we're going to see Tom Jones. And you're like, and you're like, huh? how lame. Like, they're just going to Vegas to see Tom Jones. There's so much more fun shit to do in Vegas. But like, that's gonna, that's me now. I'm like, I'm gonna go see Cheryl the Backstreet Crow. Boys, NSYNC, Mix. They're do, they combined the, <laughs> the. They did? There was like a point when like, I don't know, a Backstreet Boy became QAnon. I think it was Brian. I could see that for him. Brian He's became QAnon. QAnon. So him and Kevin are cousins, and Kevin and him had a rift on Twitter 
over politics, like over Trump My and cousin Hillary. My cousin trolls me online, so I, this is relatable. This is just wild that it was like such a cliche Trump Hillary <laughs> argument. Yeah. And it was in the Backstreet Boys. No. And it broke up their Vegas residency. So like the remaining, and then AJ was like off the rails. But like the uh, remaining members of Backstreet Boys, whomever they were, not Nick Carter either, by the way, they went to the NSYNC guy, guys like Fatone and uh, Bass and these fellas that aren't. Uh, you know, it's fucked if you're going to Joey Fatone. Well, that's what I mean. They're going to the other. Or they're whatever. going to the other rejects. <laughs> I can't even can't even name the other two Backstreet Boys, but they're going to the other. They're going to Fatone and Bass and <laughs> Kirk Patrick's got his watermelon or his pineapple hair, and they're going to him. And, like, you know, J.C. Chazé still has pride and fucking, you know, Timberlake's like, you guys get fucked, you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm married to Jessica Biel. Gotta go. Timberlake, I just sold my music collection for $100 million. You guys can get fucked. <laughs> yeah. Lance Bass, you want to go to space or something? That's cute. Whatever. I mean, try to get in the tabloids. You you know, you used to fuck Danielle Fischel and now you're gay all of a sudden? Okay. Where was that gay stuff before? He did? Yeah, they were dating for a long time. Wow. Pop culture knowledge. You are dropping <laughs> pop culture. Only, uh, yeah, from knowledge. 30 years ago. Yeah, but it needs to be talked about. And who else? Who's better to talk about it than you? The the the, the your your fan base, the uh, children. The shanks. I mean, not the children, the Gen Zs. You know the the children. The uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, children. The um. Euphoria kids out there that watch your show. Oh yeah, the Euphoria teens. <laughs> yeah, they don't know what I'm talking about. They're like, "Is this guy talking about?" It'd be like somebody coming up to me and being like, "Anne Margaret was a real piece." <laughs> <laughs> Anne Margaret was a real piece. There was a there was a DJ that I uh, used to. Have, there was a man who was a DJ in my hometown, and he was like a DJ like back in the day where he'd like be on the radio that would blast through the whole country so he'd be like everyone hear him from like buffalo to beyond and he had a tv show where it was like one of those ones where it's like we're all we're having a dance competition folks and then you know like it was like greece you know where they were like and he's like you're eliminated and he was the guy that was like the host of that and he was like by the time i started working in like 2000 and like three this guy's old as hell but he's still like cool and shit Mm -hmm. but he didn't know how to work any of the buttons because like in his day they had people work the buttons right and he just he's like i just talk they and so i had to like work his buttons a couple times his name was tommy shannon and he uh used to talk about how he fucked ann margaret all the time no yes I swear to God. <laughs> that's what he would say <laughs> so, like off air he'd be like but like he was the chillest dude like and when i say he say he fucked her he said nothing disparaging nothing dirty like like if it was me i'd be like Hey kid, I fucked Ann Margaret. Like I'd say it like that, <laughs> but he used to be like, "Ann and I had a romance like you wouldn't believe," and no, it was like, no. "You know, he fucked her based off of the intimate romantic <laughs> detail that he spun to you." Like it was a romance. Yeah, you so I didn't want to even like uh, I didn't want to portray it in a way where he was like talking crass about it, but he was like, "Fine piece of ass." He would no. like say things like that, like. I'm doing a terrible impression of him, but he was like the man. And I was like, I don't know, fucking 17 or some shit. And I was like, this guy's the shit. That's amazing. And he retired and he just like travels the world now. I think he's still alive. I mean, it is it is also crazy just to think that like in your lifetime, you you have probably a lot of lovers. Sure, I love that. And like that. all of them, it's all fun. Of they're them, all the stories. They all compared notes. Some of them are bad stories. Some of them are <laughs> some like them are horrible. some of our whimsical ones, where you're <laughs> like, I want to put it in a bottle and just throw it in the ocean. You know what and I mean? And like, it ha- time to have, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was I, I was talking about I was like, if I date a girl seriously, mm-hmm. and I haven't in a very long time now at this point, which is pathetic. I have to throw my phone into... I have to get a new phone. I just have to, like, start over. (laughs) Because, like, (laughs) the phones haunt you now. Like, I just bought a phone, and I open it. I go, thank God, I can fresh start, you know? I don't have my, like, this lady's nudes I can go look at and remember this time, you know? Like, like you have, like periods of i i keep them no, like like taxidermy painful. i keep them like trophies on my <laughs> <laughs> and i fucking like i go like ah remember that hunt 
<laughs> you know, like you go like that was a real time. And you ha- you <laughs> reminisce about the restaurants you went to, and you start like, <laughs> and you, you know what I mean? It's a whole yeah. thing. Why and I have them, and I keep humans? them. I don't know. I'm. It's all new with these phones. I've have like nudes from phones from like they just keep following me in the cloud, you know. And it's the, like <laughs> the nudes just go everywhere you go. Ian Finance basically had an intervention with me the other day. He was on the podcast. He goes, "You have to get a friend." And he has to be strong enough to delete everything for you. Like, he has to talk you through deleting those. <laughs> the nudes? From the past. Yeah, I go, <laughs> I go, I just think I just should have an archive phone. You know what I mean? Like, why not just have a graveyard of nudes almost, you know, where you just go like, I could look back when I'm 65 and just go, ah, Tabitha, you know, or whatever. <laughs> I want to tell my grandkids what it, I what they're. I don't know, like, like if my husband had just had like a photo album of all. Of but what if he goes like he goes, honey, like, like he goes, he honey, I'm burying it in me, the backyard. If he wasn't cheating on me. No, he goes, honey. He could have the it. cloud. I'm making a new cloud now that I'm with you. I'm I am in love with you. I'm you making, are my everything. I'm making a new. I've cloud. made a new cloud. <laughs> I have a fresh cloud. I've paid the extra, the extra uh, the fees. <laughs> One ninety nine or whatever it is a month a year. Okay. This phone, I'm going to keep paying for this this cloud as well, unfortunately. But I'm going to bury it in a time capsule in the backyard until we are elderly. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I can pull it out then and we can look at it together. I mean, we can talk about the times. <laughs> I can tell my grandchildren. <laughs> Your father was in Kansas City and this lady was a real trollop. <laughs> Why can't it be like that? Why can't we just have that? God, I, just I would start if I sincerely though if I was in a serious relationship and it was like I'm I'm in love with this person I have to start a new life <laughs> on the on the cloud a new life I have to get a new phone number I mean I just have to and okay. uh because I would not like and here's the thing well do you feel like that there would be people from the past following you here's the thing I wouldn't have <laughs> I would turn you. them away but it wouldn't be fair to the person because they would constantly see me even though like if something came up if a message from the past <laughs> comes Reese. into the DMs and then all of a sudden it spawns a thread <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that like you go like four years ago this was real t- something you know yeah. what I mean like I don't want that person to like then get paranoid so that's why I would start a new one but I'm saying like I don't know the DMs last forever it's just like this is the new starting point. That's what I would say, I suppose. <laughs> I'd go, this, is this is the new starting point in my life. From now on, every DM gets deflected. Every text gets denied. There's no uh, texting you, forward. When you're in a you serious have to do like relationship, a real, you, need a new, you need a whole new phone. It's just been so long. No, I mean, I, I, not, I, I would like not to. But if I, <laughs> but to be fair, yeah, to be fair to the other person, because like, here's the, that's the thing. I would be like, this is a graveyard of mistakes. Yeah. I mean, don't good and bad. And they're all timestamps. So they're before you, they, <laughs> they predate you, but you can see a poor path. You don't want to know me. Before. I'm evolving. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to see <laughs> what I was. Uh, yeah, I have small. come. I've <laughs> come. I've come far, but you don't want to see exactly how far in detail. Just trust me. Just trust me. Just you know trust what? me. I'm. I've evolved. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because I would hate for someone to go back. Through but you my can shit. also through the dates. You could just go like, from our moment forward, none of this has occurred. I'm just like. Imagine, like, your kids find, like, dirty text messages that you send. <laughs> I know, dude. That's, that's, that's happening. That's, that's probably happening in nudes and stuff. Oh, my God. It is, like, getting to the point where it is getting nuts, where it's, like, I have to create a new identity. <laughs> a new I'm too new lonely online. where my identity online is probably, I don't know. <laughs> You're thinking you need to create a new identity? Ugh. I don't know. It's like everybody has them. I mean, like, mine aren't toasty. So, you know what I'm saying? Sorry, cut that out. <laughs> but you know what Again. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, mine aren't a, a nefarious person's uh, DMs. So, it's not like there's anything bad. But it's like if a person wants to be in a serious relationship with me and my phone just goes bling, bling, bling for DMs or just like texts from the past crop up, you know what I mean? And I'm guilty of it too. But, like, 
Yeah. That is fucking wild to think about. I have to get a new phone. <laughs> Do you, wait. I think it's funny that like that's your solution. Is like I'll just get a new phone. It'll be a fresh. Start. I'll hide from them. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's the old school that? version of like, Dude. honey, I uh, hit a man on a bike, and uh, we have to move to Wyoming. <laughs> yes. And we have to get a new name. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in it together, you know. It's just basically oh, filing for bankruptcy but, on data, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just over. like, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I, well, sometimes this shit will haunt me. It'll show me, like, a slideshow from 2018. Yeah, what is it doing? Why is Why it is doing it that? Me a hey, phone. I, went to I go, sometimes I go, X. hey, phone, how about you chill? Sometimes yeah. it'll show me one where I'm like, yo, why do you got to remind me of that right now? Yeah, I don't need to remember. You put me in my feels phone? When I went to Kauai with my ex. <laughs> yeah, right. And oh, my like, God. It's that's like so us funny. in front of a canyon and I'm like hugging. I'm like, what's happening? It's yeah. like it's like just showing me the love I don't have anymore. No, yeah, yeah. You just <laughs> go like, like, wait, what? Hey, I know you're sad right now because you just ordered Chipotle on Uber Eats and you <laughs> are laying in bed. But you want to remember that time in Atlantic City? <laughs> and you're like, no. I go, no thanks, phone. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, hey, remember when you were on the road right now and right now you're sitting at home on a like a lazy piece of shit? Last year you were on the road making money. What are you doing right now? Yeah, no, That's I hate, what it's I telling hate me. when it does that. Oh, I I fucking hate it. I go it's it reminds you of a time that you're already thinking about. Always like, like subconsciously. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? In feelings where you're just like Man, something's. I'm sad right now, and I don't know why. And then you and go, "Oh, I know why." Last year I was doing this. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, phone. You yeah, fucking asshole. Like, yeah. It's like it knows what's goes. It here's why you're sad. Disneyland sa- with an X too. Yeah. Popping. Here's why you're sad. You fucking loser. Uh. Well, that's our podcast. Oh my god, I, we could go forever. We could. I wish we could tape more so we could smoke this. We and can I have another wine. <laughs> we can. We can smoke that. I mean, we don't have to do it on the air, but oh, we yeah, can we do can it on the air also. We can wrap it up. I'll, I will do it on the air. I'm having so much fun. This is the best podcasting I've ever done. Yes. Thank you for coming on the show. Where can people find you? Do you have anything I mean, coming up you want to promote? No, I'm a lazy piece of shit right now. Um, Actually, I'm going to be in San Diego on July 16th. That's I'm going right. to be there And you're going to come with me. Hell middling. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. It's going to be a really July fun time. July 16th, two, two shows. shows. <laughs> Right? Seven and ten, yes. Seven and exactly. ten. Come out, support live comedy. What's the club? It's the Mike Drop Comedy Club. It's brand new, and it's my buddy Casey who owns it, and uh, he has run some of the premier comedy clubs in the country, and I love him to death, and I can't wait for uh, to see what he's done with this place. Cool. I can't wait to see it, too. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, and also I have a pair of OES socks for you. Oh, yeah. Shop discount code. What are they? Sarah hearts and, and beers? Yeah. Hearts oh, that's cute. That's very nice. Thank you. You thought like, of me. That's very the most, on theme. This is the most Josh pair I have. Yeah, hearts and so- hearts and beers. That's yep. like my whole life. This yeah. one's broken. The beer's pouring <laughs> into the broken one. That's me right there. <laughs> Shop. Oh, yeah. Discount code Sarah10. Give the gift of socks. That's our pod. Bye. <laughs>